Welcome to episode three. In this episode, I'm going to be battling with heaters again. Got to the root cause of all the electrical issues, though. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Watch, enjoy, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment as you wish. Uh, contact me if you want work like this doing on your car. Be it Land Rover, Range Rover, whatever, contact me. I'm not particularly focused on Land Rover, Range Rovers, but it's what I know. Found the feed here. This is the feed that wire the feed the feeds the um the, the motor circuit. The other half is behind here. Um, that's not a problem. Um, of course, it's dead. No bloody voltage to it at all. So then I go back to the parts diagram. Dun 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 dun. Go back to my wiring diagram. So basically, looking at the blower motor, the white slate wire, which is the one I tested, and the earth wire which I've tested so that's the connector the connector I've got has got a black earth wire and a white slate feed the white slate feed comes from the heater or air conditioning relay not the load relay the relay there's two relays in this circuit right okay so then okay we've got a red slate yellow red two yellow reds two yellow reds a red black a white slate a red slate so there are two yellows two reds a white and a black. Let's go see if we can find that because it should be. Well, I've been here already, I'm just showing you guys. It should be in the passenger footwell. It's got torchy. Where's torchy? Pause. Found torchy. Right, let's go round to the passenger footwell where all these relays are. And I've actually done you a favour because I've yanked them all off already. Yeah, it's the green one. Uh, see if you can spot the issue with the green relay. Ain't there. So if we look at the back of it, we've got the torch there so I can see the back of it. On the back of it, we've got one, I've been over through this already, but we've got the reds, we've got the yellows, we've got the black. It's all there. So that's the uh, relay that we want to be using. Alas, there's no relay on it. Um, so that will be why there's no power going through to the blower up here it doesn't control the all of the um, aircon relays because the fans the um, aircon have got a slightly different supply so i'm going to go and find a five pin green relay because it is five wires on the back of this thing five pin green relay and fit it a few moments later it finds the connector right up there wired in 12 volts to it nothing so if i earth this wire and then this wire I'm plugging into, I'll get nothing. Absolutely nothing. Circuit's there, motor's doing nothing. So this heat just have to come out on freight traps. Right, <laughs> good news is we're about 99% of the way there. So I'm just going to get the rest of this dash out. Um, Centre console needs to come out, dash needs to come out. Um, as you can see, there's a, there's a world of uh, electronics going on over here. I'll unplug the lot. I'm going to have to get the heater unit out, then we'll test it on the bench. Um, but it's just not doing anything at all. Um, and a lot of the stuff I've taken out in order to get to this point has been required. So I might as well just finish the job so, now. Um, because the heater is quite low in the cooling system, um, the pipes are down the back of the engine over here. As you remember, I often have joy undoing these two pipes, so I'll probably end up renewing them at the same time. Um, I do have much fun undoing these two. Um, what I'm going to end up having to do is to lower the level of the cooling system. So I've got basically got the head of the radiator, the head of the tank, the whole top of the engine needs to all be drained down. So what I tend to do, oh, here we are, I use a Pella 6000 suction. Um, and all I really do then is take this fella off up here, one-handed, pause. Here we go, right, okay. So the Pella comes with a nice long it use this thing to suck oil out of gearboxes or all sorts of manner loads of different things i should drop that down inside the radiator has that gone all the way yes it has it's gone far enough anyway remove the expansion bottle cap i don't want to be creating any vacuums in there. it's unlikely because uh, there's a whole heap great space position feet on base and create a vacuum inside the bottle and you can hear 
Let's have a little tinkle. Oops, needs to be two handed. Ah, and there it goes. So when I've got that thing um, largely full, I will probably have enough room then to get the pipes off the back of the engine. Because before I go too far, I'm going to have to uh, get the pipes off the back of these units. Um, they come through right at the back there. This is all the heating unit here. So I need to undo all these um, uh, hoses here. They all need to come off. Uh, the loom needs to separate so it goes either side of the dash. That hose up there is split. It wasn't me, it was already split. Uh, so that needs to come off. That's the one that feeds the aircon through to the vent right on the end. Uh, on my car, that pipe is also split. It's got a sock stuffed in it or something else. Oh, here we go. Now, what have we got in here now? So we've got all this fucking shambles in here now. So we'll get that connector off there, off the other switch. That can come out. And there's two connectors up here on the solenoid, which you can't see, but I can. Well, I can feel them anyway. There we are. One of those wasn't even connected. Again, doesn't help really, does it? We've got this little connector here, which is for the uh, fresh air vent. That all goes that way, if you see. And the slight problem we're going to have here. Oh, look, there's a ton of change down here. Look at all this. You know, I told you about the Land Rover where people hide the gold sovereigns on the chassis. Hang on, David, I found you a load of money here. Look at that lot. I'll put it in the, uh, the old saucepan of despair. Right now, these little fellas here, they come off the front. Oh, they do come off the front. And these are the little pipes that go on to hold the rear ventilation in place. By the way, none of this was attached when I pulled this front panel off. None of these uh, pipes were physically pushed into the front of the heater. So I suspect someone may well have been here earlier. Now, what normally happens when you have the, the, uh, the, the uh, loom all put in properly is that the speakers go one side and the rest of the loom goes the other side. It's not going right, to I've done everything I need to do on this side now, so all the loom is separated between the two halves. This comes with the heater, this fella. We'll be careful of him when we, when we extract. Next, I need to um, uh, undo the two heater hoses and get those out of the way. Now, someone has definitely had this thing out before. Definitely, 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 definitely had this heater unit out before. Um, because there's all sorts of weird things like screws holding the vent pipes in and so forth. So this thing has been out. Um, I don't know why it was out, but it's been out. Um, so it, we're not in virgin territory. <laughs> um, there is a reason. So we'll pull this thing out and we'll find out what on earth has gone wrong with it. And if it's a bloody electrical connection uh, up on the um, motor at the motor end, then you can blame your previous owner. Um, right, okay, let's put these bits away. It's out. Right, okay, so we've got him on the bench. Um, I've just been going through doing a visual check. These pieces on the side here, not a problem, they just screw on and they've been removed off this one anyway. Um, in fact, the screw holes are all in exactly the same places. I think they're going to be okay. It's got the clips for the uh, footwell heater, that's exactly the same. The only thing I can see that's missing is the aircon uh, pump, which looks like it just clips on underneath that lever there and then. Can go back in on here this one's very dusty though it's been in a paint shop or something um i'm going to give you a call david because it's not bad um but kind of it, it needs taking apart really if i'm being honest it will need taking apart let's put that on there before we forget about that one now just to prove i wasn't going absolutely berserk with this thing we plugged him in we peeled the the, the cover back on this thing so we've got a neutral and a live, and it's exactly the same as this one here. Oh no, this one's the other way around. Why is this one the other way around? I can always take the loom off, I suppose, and put it back on. Anyway, so what we'll do, let's swap these over. So my negative, is here so i'm just going to strap that onto the negative terminal give me a second right so the negative terminal is attached and now we will just 
flash onto the positive. All right, now I'm going to get a welder going out of that. There's something big time wrong gone with that motor. Ooh, there's a bit of smoke as well. Like a bit of smoke. Right, this probably explains why the switch was burnt out because I think that the motor seized solid by the looks of things. So we're probably going to want this end plate here anyway. So I'm going to take the end plate off because that one's different on the Discovery. Um, and uh, see what the motor's doing inside this. And if the motor is lunched in this, um, but what I've noticed is in this one, if I take this end plate piece out, it's going to come out because I just put the bastard thing in there. Sometimes. Right, what I have found is the motor in here has got a bit, a fair bit, like a centimetre and a half of back and forth movement, which I'm not happy with. Because, yeah, there's no way is the customer going to be happy with me spending two and a half hours putting this all back together again to find that the motor squeals. Um, and this is the reason why I want to talk to him. Because this one is absolutely minging inside. It's like it's got a week's worth of... That's just paint dust. Dust, paint dust, biological hazard this. So it needs cleaning out. In order to clean it out properly, it needs taking it apart. If you're going to take it apart, I might as well sort the motor out. Well, what I wanted to do here was just where's this end cap off because it's only a couple of screws and then we can see like we can in this one, we can see the blower actually, you can't see it in that one you can see it but there's no light oh my goodness it's nice to be tucked up this end of the workshop out of the way of that uh, storm Kira What happens if you ever get a storm named after yourself? I mean, like, my missus, I mean, <laughs> we do actually, I, I, I nickname her Hurricane because she kind of rushes around like a... Oh, Mr. Gravity rushes around like a mad thing all the bloody time. Right, let's tip this thing backwards. Oh, uh, yeah, you can see this whole thing is off-centre. That is seized. Oh, thank you just relieved itself on my uh, bench yeah the motor in this thing is foobar and it looks like it's taken the blower with it as well now let's put you down for a second puddles uh, let's tip you on your back I'll clear this puddle up in a second now what I'm basically looking at in here let's put it in the same location so we can kind of look inside when, when I go in here I can you can't see. Let's take this end plate off like I've done the other one. Pause. Right, so in here, can you see how much I'm pushing that pan, fan backwards and forwards? So when it's in its most forward place, it's touching the edge. When I push it right in, it's fine. Here, you can see the end of the motor. Now, if I push the fan, if I go back down again and push the fan, you can see the whole armature is moving backwards and forwards. So there's something gone wrong with this motor as well. So whatever happens, I'm going to end up splitting one of these units in half to repair it. Do we go for the Range Rover unit or do we go for this unit? Because whatever happens, I'm going to have to split one of them in half. I'm inclined to repair the Range Rover unit. Um, right. I pulled this thing apart. I just separated the two halves. It's taken me about 10 minutes or so. It's wired together. Now, I've got no idea why this thing was wired together. Um, it's not good though, it really, is it? And also the motor is just, it's, it's, it's very bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unsnip that wire. I shouldn't take too much effort, I don't think. I've got no idea what goes through the minds of some people sometimes. It's never wired in originally. So I'll tell you what, let's wire the fucking thing in. Got no idea why that was wired. It's wires melted into the plastic here. Let me see if I can push the motor through. It should come through now. Um, because basically there's nothing holding it on the other side now. Perhaps separating the halves allows you to get the motor out. I reckon when this thing let go, it let go big time. I mean that has melted in there 
absolutely melted. All because some ham-fisted gibbon went through. I've had tried to get the brushes out to see if it spins. Both brushes are melted into their holders. All of the insulation at the bottom there is melted. That is one burnt out motor. I'm pretty sure that that would have filled the car up with um, some pretty acrid smoke. This stuff doesn't smell nice when it burns out. Um, right, so that's, that's a lump of scrap. Um, I'm waiting for the customer to give me a shout back. What I'm going to do though is plug that, just plug it onto the loom at the moment, because um, I can do that. And then I'm going to see if the variable speeds work, because that then indicates as to whether I'm going to put the um, variable resistor, the bit that goes through the front panel of the uh, of the deck. If that's going to go back in, it's going to go back in. I don't think it's working though, um, and the reason I don't think it's working is because the aircon fans don't change in speed either. Now what I've done is I've salvaged the entire end plate off the Range Rover <coughs> heater units. I've got all the bits ready to go back in again, but again, that suffered badly because of the shenanigans that have been going on here. I mean, I've seen motors burn out before now. More often than not, this stuff like burns for some time after, which is possibly why relays and things were removed to cut all of the power to the motor. Um, <coughs> and then they covered it up for my customer covered it all up and then said ah yes blower doesn't work it's not not difficult to fix not difficult at all to figure out a piece of cake really um this all looks okay the housing apart from this piece which is also broken um is is okay um that vent there is the one that goes on the front remove uh, my number two at all this fella here so that's the one that does there. Um, and if that isn't very good when it goes back and forth, well, it may, may well work, I don't know. Um, but depending on where we go with this, I might end up replacing that one. I haven't got... Oh, I have got another one of these heater boxes at home. Yes. Right, I'm going to go and plug this fella in. Right, we've got the heater upside down so the cable reaches as the, 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 the feed cable is there and I've got the two switches down here somewhere that's the blower speed and then the other one is the uh, the air con or whatever so I'll put this one on to normal recirculatoring ignition on the funny noise very noisy this fan. There's something wrong with the switch and it's noisy. I'm not surprised there's something wrong with the switch because I'm not surprised. I'm gonna have to, what I'm gonna do is I should have a loom with one of those but what's good news is that the variable resistor part it's working now because this dash is all apart. I'm just going to disconnect the battery. I'm not going to leave it like that. So the fan is noisy on that one, but it does work, and the variable resistor is working, which is good news because they're about 50 quid. Oh. Right. I was going to go through my box of loom bits. <sighs> box of loom bits. Um, and I'll see if I can find that connector. I've got two boxes of loom bits. I think the top box is early loom and the bottom box is later loom. So I'm rather hoping that in here somewhere I'm going to have that connector and I'll just splice it on. Ah, oh, dear me. Well, you don't need to watch me doing this. This is another example of me not chucking anything away. Because, there you go. It's going to come in useful. I've even chopped all the, uh, the bits up in here. 
that's by the way that's the earth point that's what it looks like obviously a load of black earths go in there but inside this thing here pause resume inside there there's a whole load of spade connections that connects onto the loom and then this piece just secures onto the body uh, so that bolts up to the body so all i did when i fixed the problem with the um the non-start was clean all these connectors up in here gave them a good old lube pushed it back together again and that sort of fixed it really um well i think it sort of fixed it the car seems to start now anyway which is good news right i'm going to crack on with this um and i will report back on my findings for nothing more than shits and giggles i thought i'd pull these switches apart the reason i pull these switches apart is because first and foremost the switch that came off the car wasn't working very well and also um, the post wasn't attached <laughs> as I found out when I pulled the, um, the, the cable off the back uh, the post was no longer crimped on okay that's not really a problem we can fix that but look at the burning underneath it I'm going to turn it over and look at the contacts on the inside this is the same switch not great is it the one that came off the discovery box is in much better order but for some reason there was a corner broken off it so i've just that piece was still attached um but uh, i've just put a bit of super glue on it i don't know what what's been going on in here it is it, it's not too much of a problem i'm just going to um reassemble that really i think it will work i think it will work there about some focus now we'll give it a go what's the worst that's going to happen but basically because someone's been ham-fisted in putting that motor in there. They've just pretty much destroyed every core component <laughs> in line with the fucking thing. I might be able to recover it. I'm going to get a bit of steel wool on that and see if I can... Because uh, that's just... Hopefully that's just burnt Vaseline. It is. In which case, I might be able to use this base plate on that switch. Let's see. Right, nice new shiny blower motor. Um, make sure you wire these things in the right way round, by the way, uh, when you put them in. It is possible to wire them the wrong way round, and of course the blower won't work. Um, now, when you put these fellas in, it's quite important to make sure that the plastic surround, focus, plastic surround is level with the metal plate on the back. So you can put this thing in one of two orientations. So I've got the cable running up the outside of that side, and not this side. If I do it the other way around, then it doesn't mate properly on here. The other slight issue I've got is that uh, because of the ham-fisted Gibbon effects, uh, you know, events of the previous um, installer of a fan motor into this particular heater unit, um, they've broken one of the catches on the front, which is why they've wrapped duct tape around it and then wedged it in badly. Um, so. The problem is that the motor might slip on its mountings. So if I go onto the back here, it should be quite tight, but you can see it, it just slides out. So I'm going to have to either put a bit of double-sided tape on it or a bit of super glue. It's a bodge, um, but the alternative is I take the disco. In fact, I might do that because I've got to get the disco unit apart anyway. Um, <laughs> this one's missing a load of bits as well. So this one's had um, someone inside it interfering. So at the moment, this, despite the fact there's a lug missing off there, is actually the better of the two halves. Um, but I needed to get the disco box apart anyway, because I wanted to retrieve this flap for now. Uh, this one needs to come out, um, because the one that was in the Range Rover box was uh, snapped in half. So we'll Cleaning up inside the housing, all I'm doing here good old WD-40 and a cloth and it's cleaning up the worst of the dust inside the housing there's the replacement flap for an art fitted uh, that's all in place uh, the other flap um, the one that goes over the uh, the heat vent at the back here this is the one that came off the car um, now the foam is disintegrated on one side of that and the one on the disco unit is in far better shape so might as well use that as well eh it's going to be a couple of minutes to get it out. Well, so a couple of minutes. It's going to be about 30 seconds to get it out. And I might as well put that in there. Then I'm afraid I'm going to have to glue the motor into its ring uh, in one way or another. I suspect I'm probably going to have to put some um, double-sided tape around the body um, just to hold it in place. I don't want it working its way loose. And he's all back together again. Right, been a bit ingenious on this. Um, 
So um, what I've basically done is <laughs> put a couple of self-tappers in either side. So I have um, uh, found there was number 14 on the bottom and a number 8, I think it was, on the top. But that has done enough that it holds the motor in place. Okay? And also, when I wire the motor up, let me just... Um, I get one of my clamps here, clampy clamp face. Pause. We'll resume. Right, okay, so I've clamped on the negative and it's going in the right direction because we can feel air running through. So that's all working. Uh, the vents are all working. Um, everything's kind of just been lined back up again. Um, and I'm happy enough now that that is going to work. The only thing I need to sort out now is a, is a harness for this thing. They come with this bit, which is just utterly redundant. Um, and the old one came with that bit as well. Um, and it comes with a five pin connector. Um, and of the five pins, only two are connected, which is the, the, the positive and the earth. If we go and look, just in case you don't believe me on this, because it looks like it's got an inbuilt resistor, um, but they, they've obviously changed the design and stuck a resistor underneath the bulkhead. So if I go right up here, um, there it is. There it is, two, ca two cables. Five pin connector, only two are live. So we've got a live feed, which is white and slate, and we've got a black earth. Okay? So I'm going to... What I'm going to do is... Chop this off and put a butt connector onto it. And not worry about all this crap. Just don't need it. Okay, because all I've done is I've, I've wired directly off the back of the motor. So I've got a red feed and a black feed. And when I put the red feed onto positive... Beautiful, that. Fucking beautiful. All right, so I'm happy enough with that. Um, it needs to go back in, really. That's the next trick. So a couple of pop rivets, right, so what I need to do next is obviously put the end pieces on, a couple of pop rivets through here just to hold the control panel on, um, and then I'm going to put the switches on, test it in the car, make sure it all works, wire it up. Um, the local supplier, Devon 4x4, love them, didn't have the, uh, the heater hoses in, which is a bind. So basically what we've got here, in fact that one probably isn't too bad. But that, this end, you see, it's been stretched over something. Why do people stretch the wrong size pipe over? Never really understood that. Anyway, I was going to go through my box of joy and wonderment and see if I had a spare in it. I've got some pipes in here. In fact, there's one. That will be one of the heater pipes. I don't know which one that one is. Probably that one, in fact. There you go. So there's that one. Um, and have I got the other one in here? Probably. We'll find out. Uh, I can get the heater all back in. I'll be done with the heater and move forwards onto the next problem. Always good to fix these little things. So if you get one of these motors, for some reason the bracket is spot welded onto the outside of the casing with that thing. So you have to drill the spot welds out on that to remove this from the casing, then put it in and if the clips are broken just put a couple of self-tappers either side of it and it holds the motor dead steady. That is not going anywhere. And on this side, no, nowhere. Beautiful, Kim. Beautiful. Um. Yes. And then the other thing I was going to do, by the way, was going to extend this as long as I could possibly get it, because I'm fed up with reaching right up behind the bloody heater motor in order to get hold of this thing. It's a pain. So there you go. In fact, I wonder if I can just snip this off the back of the motor. I don't know what it's actually doing. It is a variable resistor, isn't it? But I don't quite know. No, fuck it. Go on the inside of the cover. On the inside of the cover plate. Here is the cover plate here. On the inside of the cover plate, it's even got provision for it. And this is the one that came off this car as well. It's even got provision for it. So it's going to go back. Right, so... Yeah, that's still on there. But is that strong enough? And if I close that vent, it comes out of here then. Good? Oh, that thing. Oh, yes. Right, this is going back in the car now. Um, and this loom, um, when it goes in, it needs to go 
down the back through there as you can see now I have got like in miles of loom now to play around with rather than fiddling and fannying around look at that oh, oh yes right I'm gonna go and get a slice of toast now um welcome for a bit of uh, lunch and then this is gonna go back in oh I'm gonna put the switches on I'll put the switches on. I'll put those down there. So I've got two. Where's the other switch? Must be in the car. Um, I still need to sort out the terminal for the heater switch. Um, I had a little go at it with a knife earlier on. Oh my God, that door's so difficult to open. Um, I had a little go at it with a knife earlier on. So there's the other switch. That's good news. If it's going to come off, pause, fucking thing. Right, okay, there we are. And this one, you see, because it's melted, um, I've been working this cable in and out. And I've got it to the point now where it does go in at least. Um, so hopefully without tearing terminals off. And then after lunch, so it's currently uh, two o'clock, we'll call it. Um, so that's been two hours getting that all together with new flaps making up a loom for it. It's taken a little bit longer than I anticipated, but again, I wasn't expecting broken flaps into, because I, I had to re take apart this other heater unit over here, the, the Discovery heater unit, to recover two of the flaps out of it. So now we've got this flap here for the fresh air vent. Oh, why is that touching there? Okay, that might need, the screw inside is just kissing it. That's easy enough, I'll, soon, I'll get a file on that. Um, and the other flap that I had to replace was this fellow over here, the that one, which operates nicely now. It's going to stop all those nasty drafts coming into the car. Right, lunch. Right, moment of truth. Let's see if the electrics now work on this bloody thing. Right. Oh, good grief. Ignition switch is stiff. Right, ignition is on. Right, so everything's working. And controls, up, down, vent. If I go down that way, I should come up down here. There it is. Um, yeah, I think I'm happy enough with that. Um, yeah, right, okay, so next thing I'm gonna do, before I bolt this thing in, oh my goodness. This is a Richard's top trick for the day. When you've done all this lot. And so I because we've got LPG of this thing, we've got this bizarre kind of setup. It's exactly the same on mine, but that is a properly fucked hose there. So I'm going to replace that chunk there. <laughs> this one here, uh, similarly, I'm probably going to replace it. It looks okay. Uh, normally, if you bend them, they don't crack. Actually, that one's going to be all right. I'm going to leave that one on. Um, however, it depends on which one I've got as a spare unit because... While the heat is loose in there um, and not bolted right up tight to the bulkhead, it's easier to get the bottom hose on. Top hose is never really a problem. It's the bottom hose that's a complete ball's ache. Um, so um, right, once the bottom hose is on, and I can put the bolts back in, and then I can put the, um, the air con back in. I've bolted the resistor back in there, but I'm not going to put the vent panel on until I've ordered, or until I've got the, um, the foams that go in there that stop the water directly attacking that little resistor thing in there. Um, but you should be able to change that now without having to remove the, uh, the aircon box. Which is always a good thing. Right, there's the bottom hose. Well, you see the top hose. Can you see the bottom hose? So you can't even see the bottom hose. It's just down underneath. It's the hose you can see. Um, that's the top one. And there's one below it. It's, it's just, you'd, you'd normally buy feel. Oh, quite why they did it like that, I don't know. Five o'clock. Um, I've had enough for now. It's taken me way longer than I anticipated putting all these hoses back in. Um, but it is coming together quite quickly now. Um, everything is working. I've got the dash and the um, uh, aircon box back in place. The heater's obviously in place there. So centre console, fit it up, finish it. Tomorrow. Worn out. Oh my goodness. Uh, right, okay. One thing I did need to do here was I just need to make sure that I've got the aircon hoses 
pulled right through. I can see they've come through. Just want to make sure they don't go any where they shouldn't be. Um, that's easy enough to do though. Right, have this interior back together again tomorrow. Seems like quite a mess of it, really. <laughs> and it is a mess of it, really. Uh, but I know where it all goes. So it's not particularly huge panic. Um, right, there's that whiff of petrol again. I know that the uh, tank at the back here is leaking uh, somewhere. So I don't know where it's leaking. I need to get the back wheel off. It's a job for another day. Um, so once I've got the heater done, uh, then the next thing's going to be getting the exhaust off. Um, a cross member out ready to change the gearbox filter oh yes <laughs>